Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Conn Report wherever you get your podcast. If you're following us on YouTube, like button, subscribe button, and if you want to follow us there, go to Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E. We'll keep it rolling there, folks. Well, today, got a practice report from, excuse me, from Tuesday, August 9th. But the big news is that Washington coach Ron Rivera fired defensive line coach Sam Mills. It's a shocking move, not because Mills was doing a fantastic job here, but because of their relationship. Mills goes all the way back to Rivera's first year in Carolina. He was an assistant defensive line coach there with Rivera, and then was elevated to the main defensive line coach when Rivera fired Brady Hope late in the 2018 season. So this is a big move for Washington. So you know there had to be something really strong for Rivera to make this kind of a move. And that's where one of the things that I would always say is that if you're a head coach, your job is to make whatever move is best for the program. I will I will say there are probably some defensive linemen here who say this should have been made two years ago, but it was made now. Why it was made now, I, I don't think anybody quite knows exactly what happened. I know there were some frustrations with some of the approach by the defensive line throughout training camp. I think that contributed to it a little bit. I don't have great specifics on that, but I also, I don't know all that went into this decision. So I'm going to tell you what I do. Well, here's what here's what we do know. Mills was was missed this past weekend because he was in Canton for the induction of his, his late father into the NFL Hall of Fame. You know, maybe Rivera sees how things operated without him here for a day or two and, and liked how things were. Um, Jeff Scanina is going to become the new defensive line coach. Guy's got a wealth of experience and he's co- he played 17 years in the NFL, started off as a seventh round draft pick in the league, played with seven different teams, won a Super Bowl, and has been an assistant line coach for a few years here. And then he was also the main defensive line coach in San Francisco for two seasons. So he's got experience. And when you watch this group, in fact, I was just talking with Ben Standig about this before he came over here to record this. But when you watch this group, you would notice Scanina much more than Mills as far as how active he was with the group, the things that he would say, the demands maybe that he placed on them. And I think this group honestly needs that. So, but let's tell, let's, let's go into what we do know with Mills in this, in this group and why maybe he, he was let go. We knew that there was friction from in the, within this group with the players and the head coach, or at least the players having some uneasy feelings or negative feelings toward how things were done here with Sam Mills. That's been going on for a couple of years. I don't think that's, I don't know if that's much of a secret at this point, I know that guys like Matt Ioannidis were frustrated a lot, but it wasn't. It certainly was not just Ioannidis. I've heard pretty much anybody you would think of, I've heard their name as somebody who at some point has been frustrated with that. Some of that may be natural, but I do think that there was a lot of frustration over the last couple of years. And I know it wasn't just because they were playing two technique versus one technique. I think it was the way they were being taught within that, that at times I would hear chafed some players i had been told that multiple players had talked to ron rivera about this over the last couple years so you know that's some of the background there now still doesn't get me to the timing now why now you know i know again i go back to it wasn't just hey you're playing two take two gap versus one gap now it's within that structure this is how they want you to play and there were some times with some guys who maybe they felt they were better with their hands you doing it their way, even in a two or one gap system. And they were being maybe told to do it some way different that they weren't comfortable with. And that led to some issues. And I think there are times where you would wonder, are the D coordinator and the D line coach on the same page with what they're asking some of the players to do and desiring, because you'd hear that at times too, that maybe a guy would use a certain technique in a game and Del Rio would, would kind of chastise that player for using that technique when perhaps that's what they were being taught. I don't want to put all this on Mills. I'm not going to dump on him, but these are the things that you heard over the last couple of years. So it's not, you know, so it's not surprising that there may be a change. I still think the timing of it is, is very different. And I will say I, I'm, a, I'm a little surprised that Rivera, given the ties he has to Mills and the respect he had for his father, 
that and making this move. But again, the best, the one thing a head coach has to say, ask himself, what is the best move for this program? We also know this has been an underachieving group. Certainly last year, it was an underachieving group. Why is that? Is it all just on these players or what, what goes into that? Because I think anybody who's ever coached, you know, that at some point, if you're not getting your, if your message isn't getting through and the players aren't adapting to what you're saying, then you have to look at how you're saying it and the message that you're delivering. So I think that perhaps, you know, again, these are all things that you hear over the years. We also know that Ryan Kerrigan has been in camp here for the last 10 days or for the last week or so, shadowing the coaches. He hasn't had this incredibly active role. He kind of has been in the background doing what's been asked, um, communicating with players when they when they need it, et cetera. But he hasn't been this outwardly vocal guy. That's never been his style. But you wonder if he's here, does does, Ker- does Rivera pick his pick his brain a little bit more? I don't know. And, you know, Kerrigan's not the kind of guy who's going to throw someone under the bus. But I also think if asked about something, he'd be honest. Um, he'd been in that room before as a player, now sitting in on some meetings as a coach um, or as, you know, how, whatever his title is right now. Again, things that you wonder. Warren Sapp was in practice today, had nothing to do with this. It's not like they're going to sit there and say, hey, we're going to hire Warren Sapp now. No, that's not what this team is thinking. Um, they're not, you know, I don't think that Sapp or Kerrigan will have a role with this team this season. Um, certainly not Sapp. He doesn't want that. But again, Scanina will be the, the defensive line coach. Brett Disselmeyer, who's coached defensive backs, nickel backs, he's going to be, and he's worked some with the defensive ends. He will now take over with that role um, as far as like, as far as helping some of the defensive ends, et cetera. So there you go. That's that's one of the things we know. And again, I'll go back to Scanina. He's the guy that does push guys in practice. So I think that will be good, good for this group. I think this group needs some level of change. And whether it's fair or not that it's on Mills, they, I think they needed some change because I think as a, an entire group, I think this is a big year for them. It's a big year for Rivera. So this group has to produce. This is the most talented group still on this roster. They need to produce. It can't just be that, oh, they're adapting to this new technique or, oh, they're not getting it done. If they're not getting it done, you got to find a way to get them to, to get that message across. They have to get it done. I do think that the chemistry of this group certainly was an issue last year. And I think that has to improve. But within that chemistry is guys doing their job. What is it that they need? What is it that they need you to do to win on this particular play or in this game? Sometimes that means a guy like Chase Young is going to have to be basically play less for the big plays and more to free up somebody else because that's your role on that play. And, you know, I think that's, it's not alone in that. Um, So I think that's some of the stuff I think, you know, being a little bit more accountable maybe for this group, I think certainly sends a message that, okay, if, if you guys thought it was here, we're taking this out. Now it's on you. So now you've got to go produce. So if, if they want to use that as a reason, as a reason why they're not excelling, well, now that reason, that excuse has been taken away. So now you have to go do it. So I think it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Um, and John Allen came out and talked about how much he was, you know, how much we loved uh Sam Mills and how they felt like the unit was starting to progress that's all fine but we know that this group has to produce and we know that they haven't and we know that there had been some friction certainly in the past so big move and I, again I give Rivera credit for making a move um I do wonder about the timing and I think we'll still have to find out more about what in particular happened if there was some sort of a big if there was a blow up, I don't know. I have not heard that. So, I, you know, it just, again, it makes you wonder all that went into it. And we'll see where it goes from here. But again, this if this group was ever going to blame Mills, that excuse is now taken away. Because I talked a little bit about that, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on practice, but I did want to talk about a couple of things in particular, especially with the passing game because we've talked a lot about that and today to me was one of the better days for the passing game in quarterback Carson Wentz in particular what I saw today was a lot more rhythm in the passing game so there were some 11 on 11 series where I thought Wentz was very effective I thought the throws were also more pinpoint and to be honest like what we've seen even this week is kind of what we've seen from Wentz throughout his career 
looks really good here. Then you struggle. Then he makes some plays over here and you start going like this, scratching your head. And then the next day, he's really good. That's what we've seen since Saturday, yesterday, and then today. But again, more rhythm. So the rhythm part was you'd see him hit that third step, plant, drive the ball, get it out. Hit that fifth step, step up, boom, ball is out. That's what you were seeing today. There were a couple throws where he hit McLaurin on some out routes. He had on an out route where Kendall Fuller was all over him, and there was maybe, you know, foot where it was open for McLaurin to get it, and that's where Wentz stuck the ball. Previous days, that ball might have bounced. It may have gone over, may have been a little bit wide. Today, right in, right in his right in his hands. Um, we saw that a few times. There was touchdown pass to um, – Dax Mill in the in a crossing path, crossing, ran a crossing route to the corner of the end zone. And you see Corn Elder just grabbing the back of Mill's jersey. Wentz put it later right out there for him. He was able to get out there despite being tugged and make the grab. Nice job by Mill. Um, saw another ball that went through to Cam Sims down the left side in the end zone, covered by Benjamin St. Jude's. Good coverage, but he put it in the spot where Sims could have made the catch right right there very tight coverage would have been a tough catch but it was a catchable pass because of the accuracy from Wentz now we you know we still saw some other stuff there was one time there was a blitz pressure where it looks like Wentz is backpedaling underthrows the receiver because he let the pressure kind of I think get to him a little bit too much but and he's backpedaling up and just threw low one thing I think has helped and I don't think you can underscore this is the return of center Trace Ruye one of the things that Ruye has always done well is identify cover, or excuse me, protection, the protection schemes and, and what they have to do there. If you recall, he had Donnie Warren on the podcast before training camp. And one of the things he said was that he thought a difference for Carson Wentz this year would be that in pre his previous systems, he was responsible for line calls. Here, it's on the center. Chase Ruye does an excellent job in that area. I think that may be the best thing he does. I think you, I think if you talk to the offensive lineman with him, they're going to point that out as well. He is a smart guy, and Ruye was out there in practice today working with the ones as he works his way back in. So I wouldn't – I think that is part of the equation why the pass game and the offense looked a little bit better today. So there you go. The other pass I want to talk about too is there's one to Jahan Dotson where he runs a jet action, just kind of circles up down the, down the sideline. Really nice ball by Wentz. Um, and there were a couple others where in the back of the end zone, you wondered, did the guy get his feet down? But the accuracy was there today. So a good job for the offense today. Um, we'll get more into some of the practice stuff again tomorrow. But I wanted to go over more with the Sam Mill stuff because that is a big deal for a team to change coaches at this time of training camp. Really haven't seen that here. Um, Rivera did it with Brady Hoke a few years ago in Carolina. Certainly has not done that here. And big move. That's, an, again, underachieving unit that has to has to perform well this year. And if that was the barrier, Sam Mills is no longer their barrier. That's it for me. I'll be back on Wednesday with another Fractures Report. I'll talk to you next time.